Gara here once again and welcome to the final card review video of the upcoming Gadgetson expansion and today I'm gonna talk about all, all of the remaining cards which is quite a good chunk I have covered around 39 cards so there's almost a hundred more cards to go uh, I will try to make it as quickly as possible but I can see this already being a pretty long video and without further ado, let's just jump right into it with the very first class. We start things off with Druid. Druid has five cards that I haven't reviewed yet. The very first one is one of the best cards in the whole set. It is the Jade Idol. Jade Idol is a one mana spell with the choose uh, effect. Um, either summon a Jade Golem or shuffle three copy of, copies of this card into your deck and it is very similar to the Raven Idol. This has great synergy with the Fenrir Stack Helm and basically you cannot lose fatigue anymore with Druid because if this game would be a fatigue game you will always keep on Jade Idol to always just get yeah, free Jade Idols back into your deck and then you can use two to summon a golem and use the third one to get three copies of jade idols back into your deck so you basically warrior cannot fatigue druid anymore you can not lose to fatigue let's take this uh, out of the context of jade idols if we don't want to lose in fatigue we just need to play one jade idol in our deck we can always use the one jade idol to shuffle three jade idols in my deck so it doesn't matter if my opponent plays Malkazar, uh, Prince Malkazar, Warrior, or like Elise, or anything. You cannot lose fatigue with Jade Idol. And this is like a very new concept, and I don't know what to think about it yet, because Druid has a lot of tools. Also, the synergizes insanely well with the Arcane Giants. Like, all you need now in Druid is just a lot of card draw, which already you play. You can play Arcane Giants because you play them for zero mana anyways. And you can get an unlimited amount of Jade Idols into your deck. So that is a very interesting concept. I think this card is super overpowered. I would rate this like, yeah, five stars, whatever. Uh, meta defining card. It's just super broken. And it is obviously slow because the first Jade Idol you summon is a 1-1 one, one Golem. But I don't think that's a problem. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good card. Um... Yeah, what else to say? Pretty broken and Jade Druid is something I'm really looking forward to play and I think this is going to be tier 1. Next card is the Jade Blossom, another amazing card. It's a new ramp effect Druid got. It is a Vicro for 3 mana which summons a Jade Golem. So this is a great card for sure. Uh, yeah, you play this on turn 3 just to ramp which you would like to do anyways but you get those golems rolling which you really want uh, it's a fantastic card yeah it's a very powerful card you will absolutely play this in a jade golem druid but also in other druids i can see this card being played because it gives you something small on the board but it is also a spell for the arcane giants and it ramps you so it's a good card in all druid decks it's a top tier card uh, Vermin Sensei, it's a 5 mana 4 5 non beast beast synergy card. Uh, Better Cry give a friendly beast plus 2 plus 2, so it's very similar to a Hound Master. Um, similar bad starts like a Hound Master 4 5 for 5 is overpriced by at least 1 mana. Uh, so it is a situational buff, so you can buff a beast. The biggest problem about this card is, and the main reason why it will not see play is because it costs 5 mana and in a beast druid, which is the only deck you would play this in, uh, you have already so many 5 mana cards that you want to play. Like you right now would like to play a Zoo Drakes, uh, Druid of the Claws and the Strangophone Tigers and you want to play 5 mana beast so you cut the Zoo Drakes just to be able to play the Menagerie Reward on Curve and with this card yeah, you cannot play the Menagerie Warden, it would just buff like smaller beasts. I don't think this card is any good, so we'll probably not see any play. So the next card is Jade Behemoth. It is a 6 mana, 3 6 with Taunt. Battle Cry, Summon a Jade Golem. Um, yeah, another Jade Golem card, so very good if you already played Jade Golems before it. It has Taunt, 
Um, Druid was lacking 6 mana taunts for the taunt curves if you want to play Ancient of Warriors, the taunt Druid, whatever. Um, yeah, it's a very good card. We'll definitely play it in a Jade Golem deck. Um, because you summon something big and this might even protect your Jade Golem. It's not as powerful if you ramp it out quickly, so you just spawn a very small Jade Golem. But it doesn't really matter because all you want is get those Jade Golems rolling. Um, I wonder if those Jade Golems will be too slow for the meta, but all the Jade Golem cards seem to be doing something decent, so I'm looking, f looking forward to this, and I think it's a pretty good card. And the final Druid card is Celestial Dreamer, Battlecry for Friendly Minion has 5 or more attack and plus 2 plus 2. It is a 3 mana 3-3, free, free, which is un uh, yeah, under... Uh, over costed um, this would be like the stats you want on a two drop right now so you, you need to make up for it with an amazing effect and the effect is too situational super bad you cannot play this card on curve because you will never have a friendly minion with five or more attack before this card so you could pl play this to buff a stealth minion like a stranglethorn tiger but why would you want to buff a stranglethorn tiger plus two plus two with a free mana card it doesn't make any sense just for the benefit of getting a free free out so this card is completely garbage and it's a pretty much a filler card and this cat will not see any play so hunter is next the first card we have here is uh, sharky zip gunner free mana free free definitely give a random minion in your hand plus two plus two so it is effectively like a five five for free technically but not really it is a delayed buff so you cannot really see it as a buff but anyways um, the effect is not situa too situational because uh, at turn 3 where you want to play this card um, you should have a minion in your hand so this effect should almost always go off in a minion based hunter especially and plus 2 plus 2 on like a follow up play is very very powerful and 3 3 for free is actually pretty decent stats so I would consider this card being core from now on in Hunter it's a very very powerful card and it will definitely see play because I think Hunter will be good um, with or without this card. So the next one is Knuckles, it's the Hunter Legendary, it's 5 mana uh, for free 7 stats. After this attacks a minion it also hits the enemy hero. Um, it is a beast which is relevant, Hunter is missing on good five drops right now since uh, belchers and vortex rotated out so this would be another beast five drop um princessin or huhuran or whatever it's called is not really being played because there's not many definite minions you have in hunter that you want to proc so this is definitely a very sticky minion and the effect is very relevant for hunter because hunter really wants to go face but to maximize your phase damage you have to clear the opponent's minions so this minion basically does both this card has great synergy with buff minions in your hand and it has a lot of health so buffing this just once plus two plus two is already insane because this would be a five nine minion all of a sudden and yeah then you just cause havoc right you, you kill minions you always deal five damage to face and it has to be killed i think it's a pretty good card and will also see next up is the new hunter one mana spell smuggler's crate uh, yeah i hope you can i can order this online because i'm a loot crate fan just kidding give a random beast in your hand plus two plus two um one mana four plus two plus two buff is really good uh it buffs a random beast so you cannot choose which beast you buff that might be a little bit of a downside uh but yeah one mana plus two plus two is pretty good and hunter doesn't really have that many cards you can play on um, on turn one so this would be something you can do on turn one just to buff up your follow-up place it's a good card very mana efficient it gives you something to do on turn one makes your proactive power plays very strong will definitely see play and yeah might even be core in the minion based hunter decks that we'll see in the future the next card is dispatch kodo four mana two four battle cry deal damage equal to this minions attack uh, so if you buff this card it will deal more damage um, that might be sick actually because if this has 4 attack like cards like um, Blackwing Corruptor or Final Metal are really powerful because they get rid of the stuff something on the board so this card actually for, on the first sight I thought this would be rather weak but with the buff minions in your hand mechanic 
Hunter is also lacking on good 4 drops, it's a beast as, uh, as well. Yeah, I think that the buff minions in hand will be really good and you will play the 1 mana spell that the buff minion will play, then you 2 drop the buff minions and if this is a 4-6 for 4 and it de deals 4 damage to something in the board, it's crazy tempo swing. I think Hunter is coming back and in full force, this is another great card. But yeah, if this but if this minion doesn't get buffed, it's rather weak, right? But it still deals two damage at least. I think you will play this maybe as a one of. The next card we have is Rat Pack. It's a three mana two two beast. Definitely summon a, a number of one one rats equal to this minion's attack. Uh, another very powerful beast that has great synergy with the buff minions in hand mechanic. You buff this to a four four, and. Yeah, if it dies, you get four rats, which is insane value. Um, yeah, very, very powerful card. We'll definitely see play in the new Hunter. The next card we have is Ellie Cat. It's a new one drop for Hunter. It's a pretty cute one and it's it's a pretty solid one. Battlecry summon a 1 1 cat, which is another beast. So you get two small beasts on the board. Synergy with Houndmaster gives you something to do on turn one besides hero power and pass. It depends on how slow. The meta is, you might not see this card being played just because it's fine to just buff your beast in your hand on turn 1 with the new 1 mana spell and then play like 2 drops. Um, yeah, if you buff this card it will be a 3-3 free, free, and then you swap spawn a 1-1 one, one, which is fine but yeah, uh, maybe this card will not see play only in a very ag aggro meta. You get two one ones on the board. It's it's definitely an option to play something now on for one mana, but I can easily see people not having room for this card, and you just yeah play the slower minions instead and go for the buff in your hand mechanic because I can easily see the meta slowing down. So it's an okay card, but we'll probably not see play, especially if people play the the new one drop with two two stats that heals you for four. Next up is hidden cash. It's a new hunter secret after your opponent plays a minion give a random minion in your hand plus two plus two It has great synergy with all the buff minions in your hand um, Mechanics or that synergize really well So there's the new four drop that really benefits from getting buffed the the legendary and the free drops every minion basically gets really a big upside it's not just a plus two plus two buff but also a pretty good buff so you play this on two opponent plays a minion you buff your kodo your dispatch kodo and then you kill the minion he played and you have a four six on the board it's a great new secret uh, we'll definitely see play and if nobody wants to play this card i'm gonna play it so so there's that and that concludes all the Hunter cards. Wow, pretty good. I think Hunter is going to be tier 1 after the expansion. This is just my quick uh, analysis. And let's move on to the next class. Next up is Mage. And we have Cabal Lecky as the first card. Battlecry, the next secret you play this turn costs 0 mana. It is a 1 mana 2 1, which is really bad. You don't want to play this. Uh, especially Mage. Mage is a class that has great 1 drops. You have the Bubbling Book and the Mana Worm. And there's no deck that wants to play secret in the deck right now besides freeze mage and you don't want to play this card in a freeze mage deck it, The upside of just getting a 2-1 out on the board is not good enough So there's no deck where you would play this card right now. So it's a will probably not see play next card is volcanic potion Deal 2 damage to all minions. So it is a demon ref for mages Just that it deals damage to everything. So if that would be an aggressive meta Right now, I don't see this card be, uh, seeing too much play because Hunter, for example, which will be a curved deck, buffs a lot of minions in hand. But if the the rat uh, would be like a very popular minion and then you have to get rid of a lot of rats, then we might see this card. But this would be like an overkill for just killing 1-1 one, one minions. Um, if the meta slows down, we will not see this card being played too much, but if there would be an aggressive meta with a lot of zoo, then we will probably see this being played, also especially in a Reno Mage deck. Next card is the new Reno Mage card. Battlecry, if your deck has no duplicates, the next spell you cast this turn costs zero. So it is a 7 mana 5-5, five five, which is pretty terrible stats for 7 mana, and the effect is... Not the craziest effect when you think about what kind of spells we play. The most expensive spells we play is Flame Strike and Violent 
portal and getting those out for for free basically it's not for free because you play seven mana for this card so you basically get a five five minion on on the board for free but you sacrifice basically your entire deck you have to play a reno deck so in a reno mage deck you will definitely play this card but this is not a card that wins you the game for seven mana you just get an additional five five out so the card is great um, just because you can play this with a violent portal then you get two big minions on the board and you have tempo and from what we know in Hearthstone tempo is great for winning the game uh, yes this having this additional 5-5 five, five on the board might be enough to win you the game but it is not the, the craziest effect in the world for seven mana but it is a great card nonetheless we we'll definitely play this in the arena mage deck next one is Cryomancer, battle cry again, plus two plus two if an enemy is frozen, it is five mana, five five. Um, okay stats, the effect is not okay unfortunately. Um, this would be played in a new arch type of temple freeze board centric kind of deck where you just play minions, freeze the opponent's board and then go face with your minions. And for that game plan it has pretty solid stats, it's hard to kill it. And if the opponent's board would be frozen, it would be an even a seven-seven even um, for five, which is great. Um, it has great synergy with the like right now. It would not see play in any existing deck, but if there would be a new mage type that emerges from this expansion, uh, I just call it the Temple Freeze. Uh, then this card would see play. But besides, uh, if this doesn't happen then this card will not see any next up is the new mage secret potion of polymorph secret after your opponent plays a minion transform it into a one one sheep this is one of the best mage secrets if not the best uh, transforming something into a, a sheep is a very very powerful effect it is one mana cheaper than the sheep um, but it is something you can play around and if this card would be like super good and then you always play this then people know that you play pretty much sheep then they will not play their cairn into your sheep that would be like the dream scenario um, but this is very very scary from public book right because public book can produce any secret and then if you get that and play that you might actually get some crazy value out of this secret it's a very powerful secret I'm not sure if we will see too much play of this just because we don't really play secrets in any mage decks but yeah we can get this from random effects and then this would be really really powerful so the next card is greater arcane missiles it's a seven mana spell shoot three missiles at random enemies that deal three damage each so you deal nine damage in total and it's a damage spread you can also just hit the face i believe yeah so you just deal nine damage to the face which is pretty good for seven mana just like a pyroblast um it's a very expensive spell um it is like so i think this is something you would play in a reno mage because you cannot run double out flame strike and double violence portal i don't see this being played in a tempo mage deck just because you would probably prefer to play like just two violent portal instead because the card is just better um deals an equal amount to the face but also gives you a great board and just clears bigger minions because at seven mana you want to kill one big minion usually right now people would have like an empress or torison on the board and this would be kind of awkward it just doesn't guarantee the kill on it like you could just hit face twice and then once the emperor so it's not too great um yeah i don't think this card is that insane but it will probably see play in a reno mage deck next up is the freezing potion it has great synergy with the cryomancer of it's a zero mana spell freeze an enemy minion i don't see this being too great you can compare this to um, icelands it costs one mana it freezes a minion and but if it's frozen you deal four damage and that is the main reason why we see this card being played in freeze mage and it's the only deck we see this card being played if you don't count burn mage and burn mage is like a tier three tier four deck so if you want to count fun decks then we will definitely see this card being played but if you count competitive decks then there is no deck where you would play this except as i mentioned earlier this new tempo freeze mage deck uh, would uh, emerge where you just freeze the opponent's board and play minions and go face with the minions
the final mage card is Cabal Crystal Runner. Costs two less for each secret you've played this game. Um, it's a very interesting card and finally makes the secrets work. So this you could probably build another deck with the, around this card. Um, if you reduce the mana cost from this card once, it is already a four mana five five, which is solid. But you have to set this up so four four mana five five is not too crazy. But as soon as you have played two secrets. It is suddenly a two mana five five, and that is absolutely insane. And it becomes thing from the low status. And if you play three secrets, you play this for free, basically. And playing for uh, in a tempo mage deck, uh, minions yeah for five five minions for for zero mana is just absolutely insane. So you can maybe build a new Kirintor mage with the new sheep secrets. You have new great secrets. And yeah, you have new synergy cards that are not just carrying Tor Mage. So maybe you can play a new tempo based mage deck and I'm really looking forward to yeah, playing that as well. So it's a pretty good card. But only if you can make a deck around this card. We have Paladin next and the first card we have is Smuggler's Run. Give all minions in your hand plus one plus one. Wow, for one mana that's actually pretty nice. It's similar to the hunter. Spell the buffs one minion plus uh, plus two plus two. This buffs pretty much all of your minions plus one plus one. So in an aggressive deck, this might be a pretty good card because you play this and then you yeah you buff your all your other minions. You can even coin out a one drop that is already buffed like an Argent Squire. So pretty decent card. Uh, I don't see this even in a control deck. This might not be too bad if you basically forfeit your turn one. You have nothing to do your turn one. You buff your bigger minions. Um, if, if as soon as you buff at least two minions, I think this card is already generating pretty good value. Uh, yeah, pretty nice card, and but not the craziest card in the world. The next card we have is Grim Street, Grime Street Enforcer. All, at the end of your turn, give all minions in your hand plus one plus one. So Paladin is one of the Triforce classes where you have this buff minions in your hand effect. And it is a 5 mana 4-4, four, four, which is pretty weak. And But the cool thing is you get the effect guaranteed, the first one. So it will buff all the minions in your hand, depending on how many minions you have. The more minions you have in your hand, the better this effect is, obviously. And it's very interesting to build decks around this effect. Because this minion could have already been buffed by previous buff your minions in your hand effects, right? So if you play the 1 mana spell and this is a 5-5 five, five for 5 then it's already very resilient and if it survives it will keep buffing the minions in your hand so it has taunt as well so very interesting effect pretty cool mechanic it's a pretty solid card but right now we don't have a deck where we would put this card in but in a new paladin arch type definitely so the next card we have is the grimscale chum it is a one mana two one murloc battle card could give a random murloc in your hand plus one plus one um in in um, anything paladin you would not play this card so basically an aggressive murloc paladin deck um, buffing another murloc two one for one that buffs plus one plus one is pretty solid it's better than abusive surgeon especially after the nerf uh, it's perma buff usually if you buff a smaller minion all the murlocs are not very resilient cards uh, they die very easily but yeah, buffing it, them plus one plus one is pretty nice regardless, especially if it's a war leader. So if there's like a new tempo based burlock, aggressive burlock paladin deck, I can see this card being played because it only buffs murloc, so you cannot play this in a normal aggressive paladin. But besides that deck, this card will not see any play. And the final paladin card is Grime Street Protector. It is a seven mana six six with taunt, battle cry, give a adjacent minions with divine shield so okay starts for seven mana uh, there's not many seven mana minions that we play that have better stats than this the bog creeper has seven health and six mana so the stats are okay it deals with all the six drops that are played right now but and the effect is pretty good um i would play this like let's say an arena paladin right now uh in decks besides that we don't really have an archetype where this fits in very well like you would not play this in anything paladin so you would play this like in a new archetype of paladin 
And the thing is that this card provides a hidden threat. If your opponent knows that you play this card, even if he doesn't know if you play this card, if a minion is ignored at your board, you can really punish your opponent with just playing this as a follow-up and trade your 6 drop into the opponent's minion and kill it for free. And it can buff even 2, so the dream is you have full board, you play this and you just buff them with Divine Shield. And Paladin has already Divine Shield uh, synergy, so this is a great new card. Um, interesting to play around with this card, it has definitely potential, because it has taunt itself and it will protect the other minions, so you can protect cards you want to protect with this card even more pretty cool card especially if this card gets buffed with the plus uh, buff minions in your hand the mechanic suddenly it is a 7 7 so not bad not bad um, we'll definitely see some play so next class we have is priest and we start this off with a crazy legendary raza the chained battle cry if your deck has no double cards your hero power costs zero this game and now we are talking five mana five five and your hero power costs zero, so you can play this on curve. Five mana, five five is crazy good. You can immediately heal, and that's very important that you can use your hero power the same turn you play this. So it will definitely enable like in a control priest Reno the archetype, and I'm really looking forward to playing that. And not just that, you can play Justica as a follow up with the double buff. You can use the normal hero power, then you can play Justica and use the immediately the big hero power. So crazy crazy defensive card it's a very powerful card and i'm really looking forward to making a deck around this card and this is the favorite card of for me of the entire deck so the next card we have is pin's size potion give all enemy minions minus three attack this turn on only um, it's a great card in the priest control priest decks uh, because this enables cabal in any situations i have a feeling that the meta will slow down because uh, blizzard is really pushing most of the slower decks like buff minions in your hand mechanics and uh, the jade golem decks and in this kind of meta you can really utilize this pretty well it is very cheap so it's easier to utilize than the shrink meister for example you can play this on turn seven together with the cabal to pretty much steal most of the mid range minions a great card and we'll definitely see play so the next card is mana geode it's a priest two drop two free stats which is pretty bad whenever this minion is healed some mana two two crystal i guess you can just overheal this minion i'm not sure like if this minion is full health um and you do, would not summon a geode if you play this seems pretty bad and if you just summon a 2-2 crystal i mean that would be kind of good but then again the investment you have to do you don't really have the mana to do this and with the new free drop you want to just play cards in curve instead of utilizing your hero power i think this is a pretty bad card and will not see any play i don't really see a good way to utilize this um like you, you people might think about playing this and then buffing it with part shield and then trading off and then using a hero part to get two twos yeah i guess but no not really uh, it's a pretty bad card i will probably not play this even in a reno priest deck the next card we have is cabal song stealer it is a five mana five five silence minion so finally blizzard is bringing back some good silences i mean they're they have given priest silent the silence ability but all the silence cards were super bad but this one on the other hand is a very very powerful um, effect so if ends of decks would be a thing you can silence um, sylvanas and sylvanas is usually very annoying versus priest if you don't have the entomb so this gives you another ability to take out those annoying death rate minions uh, for priest especially uh, I think it's a great card. I will definitely play this in like in a Reno Priest deck. I don't think you have the room in like let's say in a Dragon Priest deck, but yeah, a great card nonetheless, and we'll definitely see play. And the final Priest card is Greater Healing Potion. Restore 12 health to a friendly character. Um, I think this is a great card in a defensive deck. If Smog decks somehow come back as they always do. 12 health for 4 mana is really really good and we have nothing similar the most similar card to this would be the healing wave from shaman for 3 mana if you win a joust you heal for 15 so this is without winning a joust you heal for 12 and i don't think you mind too much playing the 4 mana um, it's just such a big chunk of heal right when you want to heal you want to heal a big amount you don't really care about the mana cost the healing 
the heal, the greater healing spell from Priest for one mana, which heals for five, is great value for one mana, but you don't really wanna, you don't really care about the card when you wanna heal, that it heals you for one. You want, when you need heal, you want to heal a big chunk, and this will heal you for a big chunk, so, in a Reno Priest deck, you probably need this if Freeze Mage would come back, then you would take this card in. You can use this immediately after Alex draws and it heals you for 12. That's, And you can even use the hero power of this and then you're back to full life. Um, it's a very nice card to have um, in the Priest class. This would a be a card I would add into the core set. So the next class we have is Rogue and let's kick this off with Jade Shuriken. It is a 2 mana spell and Rogue is one of one of the three Triforce classes that ha get the Jade Golem mechanic. So this is Shaman, Druid and Rogue. And Jade Shuriken is a spell that deals 2 damage, combo summons a Jade Golem, so in a Jade Golem Dru Rogue deck. And I think from all the three classes Rogue will be the weakest Jade Golem class. But if J in a Jade Golem Rogue this is a pretty solid card because you can take out a smaller minion and then get the jade golems rolling so the next card we have is jade swarmer it is a two mana one one death rattle stealth minion summon a jade golem um that's really good in a as i said in a death rattle board centric jade golem rogue deck and it is finally another two drop that you can copy with the um, unearthed raptor and it has stealth so it will not die because all the bot clear spells like revenging ghoul or fan of knife swipe lightning storm they all cost three mana or more uh, maelstrom portal can kill this so that would suck but you would still get a jade golem out after yeah this minion dies it is a definite minion so you can play this in an Enzov deck as well so very sticky you get a bunch of jade golems and yeah, pretty good and we'll definitely see play if the Jade Rogue Raptor deck will be playable. The next card is Gadgets and Ferryman combo, return a friendly minion to your hand. 2 mana, 2 free, yeah, it's the meme of the whole set. It's like probably one of the worst class cards, if not the worst class card in the whole, whole set. Just very weak stats for 2 mana. Um, and you have to combo to get the minion back to your hand. So it's like a situational Yao for Brewmaster. We don't see Yao for Brewmaster in any rogue deck. Uh, not even in a mill rogue deck. So pretty bad card. We'll not see any play. Let's move on with our lives. Lucky Do Buccaneer. Battle Cry if your weapon has at least 3 attack and plus 4 plus 4. So if you have a weapon um then like a free attack weapon then this is a 99 minion for six which is insane so in an aggressive rogue this is a very powerful card 99 for six is really really good when you look at dragon warriors and the um, draconic crusher you, but the the condition from the Dra uh, draconic crusher is much harder to get because putting your opponent to 15 life is not an easy task because every deck is trying to fight for the board as soon as possible. And with Rook, all you need is just having a free attack weapon. So you just need a deadly poison or uh, just a fork, or whatever, before this card. And then you get a 9 9 for 6, which is huge. Like, not even a Ragnaros or anything else kills this. So, pretty powerful card. It is a pirate, so in an aggressive tempo pirate based Rook deck, we'll definitely see. Play. Um, the next card is Shadow Rager, it's just a new uh, Magma Rager meme card, but it is a class card, so that's like makes it even worse. For some reason Blizzard doesn't like rogues too much, so it is a 3 mana 5-1 stealth. Pretty bad, we'll not see any play. Um, Shadow Sensei is the, the final card. Uh, Battle Cry give a stealth minion plus 2 plus 2, so you can combine this with the... Shadow Rager to make it a 7 3 6 6. Not really. Um, yeah, pretty bad card, I would say. 4 mana 4 4 as a standalone is terrible. The the con uh, the effect is too situational. You would need to have a stealth minion on the board and then you just buff it plus 2 plus 2. And that is not like game winning. So, yeah, you. It's like compared to a Huntmaster, so much worse. Uh, you also wanna de stealth minions usually. You don't wanna just you know it, it has synergy with the new legendary, 
But you play so many good cards in Rogue. I would never put this over a Pillager, for example. But if you have like a board centric stealth deck, then maybe. But even then, why would you play this card? I don't know. It is an okay card if you always get this effect. If you have that many stealth minions and Rogue got a plenty of death, uh, plenty of stealth minions. You maybe play the stealth rock, whatever, and then you would play this card, I guess. But the, that sounds more like a meme deck than a serious competitive deck. And that concludes rogue. And we're moving on to my favorite class, shaman. And the very first card we have is jade lightning. It is the first shaman jade summon card. Deal four damage summon a jade golem so it will definitely see play in a jade shaman golem deck and yeah it's pretty decent effect all you want is basically get those jade golems rolling yeah you summon them immediately on the board while doing other stuff so basically when you compare this to like a fire elemental right if you have like a 4-4 jade golem at that point and you deal 4 damage that's absolutely insane so jade golems are gonna be super powerful minions and they might look a little bit underrated to some people, but because they're tempo, uh, they're synergy cards, right? Uh, it, it is going to be very powerful and this card will definitely see play. The next card we have is Devolve. Transform all enemy minions into random ones that cost one less. Uh, I think this is pretty weak because usually what you want to do is wipe out the opponent's board. You don't want to just make it weaker. It's like a very weird way of AOE, uh, but it can counter maybe like a, f an, a full Enzov board if Enzov will be a thing. Uh, because if people play Jade Golem decks, you might want to counter them with like Death Rattle decks with Enzov decks, so we will see. Um, uh, but yeah, like if, if you devolve a full Enzov board, ev Enzov is a 10 mana card, so you would make a 9 mana card out of it. Like the Cairn and Sylvanas would be 5 mana cards, so I think even if you like ruin all the death rattle effects the bot will still be way too powerful so i guess this card will not see any play or i just can't think of a situation where you want to play devolve next card is finders keepers uh, i like the name of this discover a card with overload overload for one so this card overloads you um discover a card is usually very very powerful this uh, discover an overload card yeah you can find a totem golem but I think that this card overloads you that is not good um, if this card would not overload you I, I would definitely see this being played in every deck but the o tempo loss you get from this card is too huge um, yes you can play a troc plus this and above the troc but yeah overloading I don't think that the overload on this card is actually good. I think I would play this. Uh, we will see how this turns out, right? You might still play this card. There's pretty good overload cards. There's like lightning storms, elemental destructions, and more totem golems. But you cannot play a totem golem as a follow up to this card, unfortunately, because it overloads you. So it might be too clunky. Mm, I really don't like the overload on this card. Um. Yeah, it's a pretty weak card, but it might still see play. We will see. Uh, probably not. I don't think we will see this card being played too much. Just because of the overload. Too much of a tempo loss. Next card is Call in the Finishers. Summon 4 1 1 Murlocs. Yeah. 4 1 1 Murlocs. 4 mana. Doesn't seem too great is easily cleared by a revenging goal like cards that cost less than this card so final of knives and all that stuff so shaman has very powerful four mana cards now also thing from below and all that stuff you would not want to play this card in any shaman deck it it is a new card for the shaman murloc shaman and with the any anything is awesome but maybe this can combo with anything can awesome I don't know, doesn't seem any good. So we'll probably not see any play in the series constructed. Next card is Yinshu Water Speaker. It's a great card. It's a 4 mana 3 6, which is pretty good stats for 4 mana. Battle Cry restores 6 health 
overload for one this is like another overload card you could get from the one mana spell so that's not too bad restore six health is a lot um, so it's a new heal bot pretty much with overload so it has synergy with it actually has synergy with the Unbound Elemental as well because you can play this as a follow-up. It has great synergy with the weapons. One big um, downside of playing Midrange Shaman is that you, when you face like a Tempo Mage, for example, you take too much face damage from the Spirit Claws. The Spirit Claws are great, but you cannot really afford to take too much face, uh, face damage as Shaman when you're fighting for the board. So this would be a great tech card because it is a minion that you can play and you oftentimes don't, you don't really want to take in a healing wave. So you have heal available so that's super awesome i'm really happy that this, this card exists and i will definitely play it myself the next card is lotus illusionist after this minion attacks a hero transform it into a random six cost minion it is a four mana three five so the average stats of a random six cost minion in hearthstone is around five five uh, to high roll a minion like savannah hymen is about two percent but you can also get super garbage minions like the cold seer which is a 2-3 minion for 6 mana and then you basically make this minion weaker after attacking the face so this is also like around 3% that you get something of the bottom end so but the average minion you would get from this after attacking would be 5-5 five five. so if you attack the face you make this a 5-5 five five. this is how you should look at this card and yeah it's pretty good if, it, if that happens right but is it worth to play a 3-5 card without taunt for 4 mana with a situational attack to just buff this attack a little bit? Uh, I would say no. It can technically heal him because if he would have taken any damage and then you take go to the face. I don't think this card is good and we'll probably not see too much play. There's a lot of other good champion cards I would play before I would play this card. So, and the next card is Jade Chieftain, Battlecry Summoner Jade Golem, give it Taunt. It's one of the weaker Jade Golem cards, but it will definitely see play in a Jade Golem Shaman deck regardless. Yeah, give it Taunt, so you, in the best case scenario, you get a big Jade Golem out and you buff it and give it Taunt, so pretty good. It's a pretty good tempo play. 7 mana is pretty slow, that's why it's probably one of the weaker Jade Golem cards, but will still see play in a jade golem shaman deck if that is a thing and the final card is the jade claws it is a two mana two two weapon which overloads you for one better cry summon a jade golem so this might be a reason why you would play the one mana spell because you can get the jade claws because the jade claws summon to jade golems and all you want in a jade golem deck is summon as many jade golems as possible so summon a jade golem after you equip this weapon it's pretty good so you get a board take out a smaller minion from your opponent not too shabby and you have some synergy you can play a totem golem on free after this card or you play totem golem then you play this as a follow-up so pretty good synergy there yeah pretty good card and we'll definitely see play and that concludes the shaman cards next up is warlock and we have also another nine cards from warlock which we haven't reviewed the first one is the abyssal enforcer it is a seven mana minion battle cry deal free damage to all other characters um so you would definitely the warlock archetypes we have right now are zoo and reno lock we don't have anything else so we have to think about if you would want to put this in zoo or in reno lock in zoo we would not play this it's too slow we don't want to kill our own minions because we are usually the ones that have the board and in reno lock this is another aoe effect so it is a hellfire which doesn't kill deal damage on the on this guy uh, it is better than barragadon i would say uh, because three damage is better than two damage on on seven mana and but it damages our own face and that's like one of the reasons we don't run Baron Gathering because we don't really want to damage our own face because we could die. Uh, but yeah, it's still, it is a demon, so that is super cool. So we can get this from the new demon effect. And I think this will see play in a Reno a lock. It is like another options. 
it depends on the meta if people play a lot of if shaman is there and stuff like that then you can wipe out the shaman board with this card you can kill spirit wolves trox this is great so it's definitely better than barangadon i can definitely see, see this card being played in arena lock it's a pretty good card but yeah free damage aoe um, is usually not that great in seven mana but it's definitely not bad the next one is Seed Wheel Stinger, 4 mana, 4, 2, Murloc, super bad stats. Battle Cry, the next Murloc you play this turn costs health instead of mana. So you can play the most expensive Murloc, it will be like a, a war leader in most cases. And you make this uh, a 6 4. So tempo wise, pretty good. You pay 3 mana to get another Murloc out. Um, but the minion itself is like pretty weak um, but yeah you cheat the mana curve everything that cheats the mana curve is really good usually but yeah in what kind of deck would you play this in a murloc zoo deck i would assume and murloc zoo decks are not playable right now this card definitely helps it in the list but yeah if murloc zoo would ever come back this is a card you would play it in but will we live to see the tail that is the question the next card we have is cabal trafficker at the end of your turn add a random demon to your hand six mana six six is solid it is below average but only slightly but we have a very very powerful effect we draw a demon at the end of your of your turn and it is a random demon so it can be just a f uh, um blood imp so nothing too crazy but it can also be another Jaraxxus that we get and it has pretty much taunt because the opponent has to kill this because if this doesn't get killed we get another demon and this minion every everything that has to be killed on the turn you play it is super powerful like cards like emperor so and this minion is very very sticky it's more sticky than emperor so like you if your opponent plays a 6-6 six, six, that has to be killed that is actually very very annoying i think this is a very very powerful card right now the only deck we could play this in is reno lock and we will definitely see this card being played in reno lock very powerful card the next card is cruel the unshackled nine mana seven nine legendary if your deck has no duplicate summon all demons from your hand so um priest mage and lock warlock are like the ones that are focused on reno decks the uh, druid, uh, shaman and rogue are focused on the jade golem archetypes that's super cool and the other three classes are focused on buffing minions in your hand mechanics so it's very cool split of the classes i really enjoy it and but cruel the unshackle is definitely the worst one uh, from the reno decks uh, archetypes battle cry if your deck has no duplicate summon all demons from your hand so you play this uh, a seven nine for nine mana is super weak stats for 9 mana you want crazy stuff like 10 tens. Um, 7 9 wouldn't even kill 8 drops that are played right now so super weak stats and you don't really play any demons so and also the new 6 drop that we just saw is also not a demon and you don't want to summon Jaraxxus from your hand like you want to play Jaraxxus you don't want to summon it we don't play Noomgars we don't play any demons we would maybe play this new um, 7 mana 7 mana 6-6 six, six, that deals free AOE damage but cruel yeah we that's no demons that we play and we need to have those demons in our hand and 9 mana is just super clunky it's a very very bad card this is definitely the worst legendary in the set it will not see any play and the next one is blast crystal potion destroy a minion and one of your mana crystals so it's another option for arena warlock to uh, destroy a minion what is cool is that blizzard is actually focusing on implementing decks for existing archetypes and not just trying to make stuff work that doesn't work like bolster warrior or beast through it um, i mean maybe like it took so many expansions to have like the first semi viable beast through it deck so it's nice that they're pushing existing decks like reno warlock which exists since league of explorer so specifically make 
cards for that archetype so and i see this with a lot of these cards we've seen so far that they're pushing existing archetypes i really like it blast crystal potion i think um, it will see play in relux because to, to have another removal available in late game especially with the meta slows down and i predict the meta to slow down because they're pushing those jade golem decks they're pushing those uh, reno decks so the meta will slow down so we'll definitely play blaze blade plus crystal potion even now it would be a good card against maligos through it or whatever just to kill a big minion against a big one cleave yes destroying one mana crystal is a huge setback but at the point where you want to destroy a million it is probably worth it um, and also you can cheat out um, your minions for for cheap mana like and mountain giant for example mountain giant get, goes down to free mana and then yeah it doesn't really matter it, it sets down your jaraxus but usually in a slow matchup you don't really mind too much if you lose one mana crystal so for a very powerful effect so we'll definitely see play the next card is blood fury potion give a minion plus free attack if it's a demon also give it plus free health uh, yeah i don't think this is too good i mean it would buff a demon to plus three plus three which is pretty good but you make a white worker to a five seven which is good but would you run this in zoo the problem is that we have already enough free drops in zoo like free drops which are good on as a standalone this is like a situational card it requires you to have a demon on the board which you can buff uh, so you rather play a, a, a minion like a councilman or a, an imp gang boss so this card would probably not see too much play in reno doc uh, deck it yeah, it doesn't find any demons we just need maybe in the next expansions when we get more demons then this card might be good but right now it's just too few good demons but now you summon a minion deal five damage to your hero is the next card unlicensed up of the carry now uh, you can synergize this with the potion we just saw make it an 8-8 eight, eight for free mana seems kind of crazy maybe that would be like an archetype and just play spells that support one minion uh, there's actually a lot of buff cards for demons and a free mana 5-5 five, five is very sticky and if you just buff sp use spells to buff this that's kind of funny because there's no silence in the game nobody plays bgh this comes very early on the board but if you don't have the minion it's like miracle miracle minion lock you play this on turn three nobody can kill it and then you buff it with those potions make it an 8-8 eight, eight. on turn four just smack the face seems like a very gimmicky deck seems like something this guy's toast will play and make some highlight videos about that and the next wall card we have is the crystal weaver Battlecry gives you demons plus one plus one. Four mana five four is okay. It's very aggressive stats, but solid stats. And Battlecry gives you demons plus one plus one. It buffs all demons, so you have a full board of demons. I can actually see this card being played in Zoo. Um, we have run enough demons. Yeah, it's actually a very good card. Um, yeah, this card will see play. The reason is um, you usually play minions on the board, you have a board, you play white walkers, you play flame imps, you play markazars, imps, gang boss, and you buff all of them. Dark Iron Dwarf was already a nice tech card for Zoo, which was completely legit. You buff a minion plus two attack for one turn. But this one has more stats than Dark Iron Dwarf, it has five attack, and it buffs your entire team board like plus one plus one not just attack but also health so it's a very very good card i think if you just buff one demon uh, plus one plus one this would be already a playable card so another nice card for zoo i think it would be better than argus yeah it will definitely see play i've seen a lot of people under underestimating this card um they they don't really see how zoo works and playing this on curve is very very powerful especially when you have the board obviously when you're behind is bad but so is darker and dwarf but even if you don't have a board a five four mana five four is completely solid so this is my most underrated card of the set i if zoo is playable which it always was this is a card that will definitely find 
room in zoo heard it here first and the last wall of card fell fire potion deal five damage to all characters ay 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 five damage is a lot for six mana but dealing five damage to yourself it is a crazy it is like a freaking insane hellfire that kills everything uh, but also yourself uh, five damage to your own character like five damage is a lot it just kills everything it reminds me of game of thrones with the the the, the green fire um which kills everything pretty much the same um it kills everything what do we say we don't want to take five phase damage it's a crazy powerful AoE effect you can definitely see this being played in reno lock and it will probably see play in reno lock um it, it will kill kills mostly everything on for six mana but dealing five damage to yourself is not really what you want but it will still see play regardless it's just a huge double edged sword it's gonna be cool to see this card being played and that concludes warlock so next up is warrior we have seven cards to cover from warrior the first card is brass knuckles it is a four mana weapon so yay we expect death death might to be back but not really after you hear a text give a random minion in your hand plus one plus one so you can buff three times a minion plus one plus one with the brass knuckles so but uh, unfortunately it only has two attack and i think um two attack for weapon is super super weak and uh, we start weapon seeing played with three attack or more um just because they take out more a higher range of minions there's a lot of minions with two attack we have seen in the game like the storm raged or storm forged x from shaman or the paladin argent argentum lands uh, what else like similar weapons like that right um, the warrior has the um, one mana to attack weapon but we see this card being not being played for a different reason but yeah four mana for a two attack weapon is super bad um, just because at, at that mana cost you don't really want to kill totems from shaman you want to take out minions and since this will not kill minions also with a lot of these buff minion mechanics this card i think this is i don't know if people are overrating this card or anything but this might be an overrated card i think this card will not see any play uh, it's the the yeah the weapon power is just too weak buffing a minion plus one plus one is just also too slow and it doesn't do too much i think this is a terrible card and will not see any play hobart grapple hammer it is the warrior legendary i'm super excited because it is a two mana legendary we have no two mana legendaries except pagel and tarnas and like the dark fisher and a couple but uh, we rarely see two mana legendaries being played it is yeah a two mana two two which is okay stats battle cry give all weapons in your hand and deck plus one attacks crazy good value for two mana like it's it's cool that they come up with those two mana legendaries that a very very powerful effect for legendaries but not absolutely borderline broken i think buffing every single weapon in your deck is definitely it, it buffs the breast knuckles to a free attack weapon but it's probably still too weak but it makes your war access um, just one attack more it doesn't buff it the durability but it makes helps uh, put your go how to eight which is actually a big difference because it takes out ragnaros and giants with the first hit um, definitely something to cons uh, point out and yeah i just I, i'm not i'm not sure if you run enough weapons to justify this like right now you would run warhol and but also if you buff a fool's bane i think buffing a fool's bane to four attack is absolutely insane so you would definitely run fool's bane more with this guy it buffs all the weapons so definitely sick also in super late game um yeah, you know, just because all in the uh, over the course of the game, you you will utilize every single weapon, and all the weapons will be buffed. So definitely another card you can mulligan for. Like how good is that as well? Oh man, 
Warrior really struggles with the early game. Like Warrior has the works, which is amazing, like Bash. But Warrior definitely needs consistency. And this is not another card you will definitely keep in your opening hand. And it also buffs cards like Enzo's first mate, right? Makes them more viable. It pretty much buffs everything. Um does it? No, it doesn't buff Enzo's first mate weapon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But it buffs the all the other weapons, so pretty good I would say also an aggressive decks like holy moly buff those Arcan arcanite reapers in an aggressive pirate para uh, warrior you would definitely run this card you would freaking play 10 of these cards if you could so definitely a, a must include five stars um, core card I think in every single warrior deck maybe not in like an ends of warrior because you don't run gore hall if you just run two warks you would not run this card but in most warrior decks you would definitely play this card. I think the biggest thing is the buff to Fullsbane through this card. The next card is Grimy Gadgeteer. It looks super insane. This card in gold must look super cool. At the end of your turn give a random minion in your hand plus two plus two. Four mana four free with an immediate effect. So you can see this card as a 6-5 pretty much for 4 which would be ridiculous it like immediately buffs the card and it has taunt so if it doesn't get dealt with you will buff another minion the next turn um, so basically for fit your turn warrior really lacks 4 drops so this is very interesting I think this is better than the knuckles um, it buffs your follow up minion it buffs cards like um, the Bloodhoof Brave to our 4 8, which is insane. Definitely makes your taunts stronger. And a very interesting card um, for free is not the worst. It's easy to kill this minion, but it has a pretty cool effect. It is not resilient, so it should die after the turn it gets played, but it will immediately buff another minion. Uh, even if you just buff Grumage to a 6, uh, 6-11, Jesus. Uh, definitely a good card, we'll definitely see play. The next word card is Sleep with the Fishes, deal 3 damage to all damage minions. Ay, 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 ay. So you combine this with Revenging Ghouls. It's cool because the ghoul wouldn't die itself, so it's a very unique, interesting effect. Play Revenging Ghoul, apply this card to take out all damaged minions pretty much I mean it deals free damage to all the damage minions and that should you most in most cases be enough it's not like a mass execute which would be super cool as well right it costs the same amount as execute but it is very powerful versus shaman so if shaman would be dominate uh, or if what decks would dominate this card is super powerful because you can yeah combine it with ravaging goals very well and uh, revenges as well and you wanna run those cards in your deck as anyways and then you can combine it with this and then just pretty much get a board clear will it be too situational? I think you can run enough board, um, AOE effects that dam damage everything that you can play this so it's a mass board clear would be insane with Death's Bite if we had that card but yeah rip maybe Whirlwind comes back as well interesting card I mean if people just play one minion at a time this is gonna be very weak because it's just a situational free damage um, but if zoo midrange shaman and stuff like that would be still a thing then you would definitely see this card being played but if the meta slows down and everyone plays reno decks and stuff like that and jay golems then this card will not see much play the same with revenge, right? Uh, if the, right now we run double revenge because there's so many midrange shamans and stuff. But if the meta would slow down, we would start cutting those. The next card is a public defender. Um, it is a power creep of a def, uh, shield bearer. It is a two mana zero seven taunt. Basically, a doomsayer in verse because doomsayer is a two mana zero seven with taunt. And if it survives, everything dies. So the upside of Doomsday is just insane. So the idea is that you can buff this card. 
and then it's pretty good right if you buff this but you have to buff this on turn one to be good if yeah, I don't see this guy it's like bolster decks and all that stuff I mean you they're pushing the turn I think this is like um, the same attempt they did with the beast druid um, for two or three expansions taunt warrior will just not be a thing but maybe if they implement more and more of those taunt cards I think this is something you can choose from the I know a guy sometimes but you would not play this as a card in your deck you would not play public defenders you don't want to play zero mana two, ma zero, two mana zero sevens because they don't because you have to trade with the board that's not how Hearthstone works uh, you would play armor smith over this any day so it's not a very good card And I think that concludes Warrior. And that also concludes every single class. So I've covered every single class card. I'm super excited. Almost all of the cards seem to be playable. That's kind of insane. And uh, let's finish this off with moving on to the Grimmy Goons, Jade Lotus, and Cabal cards. So there's actually only one Grimmy Goon card that I haven't covered. And it is Don Hancho. Better cry, give a random minion in your hand, plus 5, plus 5, and it is a 7 mana, 5, 6. So value-wise, this is technically like a, like a 10, 11, not really. Uh, it's much weaker than just the raw stats, because um, it buffs, it's a delayed buff, it buffs a minion in your hand. But it is so much more above value that it's still a pretty valuable card and plus five plus five is insane on any minion if you buff like a cheap minion with this is it's probably even better because plus five plus five on anything makes it a good minion so you buff a, an armor smith to a six nine the armor smith is ridiculous so this is a very very powerful seven drop and it is probably stable it is very slow so you can only play this if the meta slows down i think um just because it takes you two turns to get the value kind of and um, yeah it's a five six for seven which is super bad if your opponent smokes you down and you play a seven mana five six he will be like what the hell the red jenkins to the face so yeah but if the meta slows down it's uh, and it is a value war it's a pretty good card and we will see it play seeing played i'm uh, not sure in, if in all classes but, uh, but in warrior at least um, because warrior has so much armor paladin might have enough heal they can justify running him hunter i don't see this too, seeing too much play but um maybe because hunter has to hunter wants to kill the opponent with the high mans this would be like very slow to play this on seven but um yeah we will see we will see let's move on to the jade lotus cards um there's actually uh, two jade lotus cards that i haven't covered yet there's only three in total so it's not too much anyways battle cry and death riddle summon a jade golem six mana five three and if you have seen the little demonstration from um, blizzard and throwdown when this card was played this card is something you would play in any jade golem deck it is a legendary and yeah it's it's unstoppable like Battlecry gives you Jade Golem and then as soon as it dies it gives you another Jade Golem so the stats of this card are also 5-3 for 6 are pretty good considering what this card does like if it summons like 7-7s seven <laughs> like if this would summon a 6-6 six, six with the Battlecry and a 7-7 seven, seven as soon as it dies it is like a freaking can on steroids and on super steroids illegal steroids it's just super insane so this is probably the strongest um, triforce card or however you want to call it just super insanely powerful and it will definitely see play the next card is a jade spirit battle cry summon a jade golem uh four mana two three so super weak stats 
but the effect is to summon a jade golem and the jade golems are just super powerful and i think you would play the jade spirit in every single jade golem deck um, basically the stats are real irrelevant all you want to do is just get those jade golems rolling and yeah i can see this card just being played in every single jade golem deck especially in druid because you can ramp this guy out the two free stats are just super weak but you don't really care um I mean, if you play this on 4 and you haven't played any Jade Golem cards, then you get a 1-1 one, one minion, and that is super bad. But as soon as you already summon a 2-2 two, two Golem, I think, it starts to be okay. This would be like a um, Resorphin Hunter, like a weak Resorphin Hunter, but as soon as you get a 3-3, free, free, then it is already um, okay stats, okay value. And after that, it's just craziness and you can still combine this also with Bran bronze beard so definitely jade golems are incoming and this will definitely see play so i said the stats are relevant a powerful card but probably one of the weakest jade golem summon cards and that wraps up the jade lotus cards so and we have cabal now the last Triforce branch, and we only have one card to cover here because we talked about the other two cards already. They were one of the first cards that were released. Cabal Chemist is this card. Battle Cry, add a random potion to your hand. It has free attack for free health, which is pretty bad, and for mana. So you can check out the potions you can get. It's like all sorts of different potions like the freeze potion whatever you cannot discover it so it just gives you a potion uh, there's a lot of good potions and there's crazy potions like the dl5 damage to everything potion so but in general potions are all good and so it is basically for mana free free draw draws your good card and not from your deck but it just gives it to your hand so out of space um, all the potions are good they really vary a lot in what they do but i think this will definitely still see playing reno decks because it gives you good cards in your hand and compared to um, um goblin engineer uh a two, the two four that draws your card it's very similar stats it's less resilient but it draws your good card like guaranteed uh so Definitely see play. It's not crazy, but in Reno decks, I can see this card being played. In non Reno decks, uh, I think it's just too weak because we have so many powerful cards that we already play in Hearthstone. So let's finish off the Gadgets and card review with the neutral minions. We have 28 left, and let's go through it a little bit more quickly because the neutral minions are not that exciting the back room bouncer four mana four four whenever friendly minion dies game plus one at one attack it's yeah very situational and even if you get this effect off it's not very powerful so it's a very bad card we will not see this card being played the next card is doppelgangster five mana two two they're horrible stats battle cry seven two copies of this minion so basically the nerfed force of nature from druid and we don't see force of nature being played in any deck so pretty bad card we will not see this card being played neither the next card is dirty red two mana two six taunt so amazing stats taunt battle cry give your opponent your opponent summons a random minion from their hand so against aggressive decks if aggressive decks would come back um this would be a pretty nice it's like Deathlord in a sense. Deathlord was summoning a minion from the opponent's deck, but this summons a minion from the opponent's hand. The opponent might not even have a minion in his hand. The thing with Deathlord is that the opponent will always have a minion left in his deck, except it is fatigue. Uh, so if you play against Zoo, this might be a pretty good tech card. Um, if the meta is slow, this might be really bad. It's really bad versus the those decks that's buff 
minions in the hand so you could just lose if you summon a very powerful minion from your opponent so very situational meta dependent card next one is the spiked hawk rider there's three hawk riders in ex this expansion this one is five mana with five attack and five health battle cry if an enemy minion has taunt gain charge so i think this one is actually the strongest one so yeah you just charge this a five mana five five charger is very very good and but it's also situational right so if he doesn't have a taunt it is just a five mana five five which is fine it's not crazy if you but if this effect goes off if a lot of taunt minions are played in the meta i think in a actually in an aggressive deck this might actually be good to take out annoying taunts from the opponent's deck so it is a viable card as it looks like Next one is another of those Hawk Riders, Leather Clad Hawk Rider, Battle Cry if your opponent has 6 or more cards in hand, gain charge. So this seems to be too situational, it's rare that the opponent will hold 6 or more cards in hand, but if this is like a slow mirror then it is a 6 mana 6-6 six, six charger. Against aggro decks it it does nothing but against control decks it might always have charge and 6 mana 6 6 charge is really good so might consider this being played it really completely depends on meta if if everyone would play control decks then this card might see play but there's so many powerful 6 mana cards that even if you would always get a charge it might not be good enough next one is madame goya battle cry choose a friendly minion swap it with a minion in your deck so super high variant super high rng the stats on this card are super terrible but you can swap a token from paladin for example and make it a Tyrion. Um, i don't see this card being too powerful just because it is not like barns where you just play it proactively you don't need to requ require any board and then you just high roll a Ragnaros out of your deck it's a baby Ragnaros, but still with this you uh, rec it requires you to have something on the board you can swap away right you don't really want to swap away a good minion so it should be in a deck that produces tokens or totems like shaman like paladin and then you can swap away with something better and then get like a Ragnaros and that will be pretty good right and then you get six mana Ragnaros out um, but you don't want to get a doomsayer out right so it's really dependent on how you build the deck with this card um, I think this card has too much variance it's just a high roll card I don't think this card will see too much play so the next one is bomb squad battle cry deal 5 damage to an enemy minion definitely deal 5 damage to your hero Ooh, it's too too much of a drawback like you take out a minion but you s deal 5 damage to yourself so it's a huge drawback yeah it's too much of a drawback you, i mean if you play like some decks just have so much healing that you wouldn't mind but it's a five mana card to take out to deal five damage usually the classes have better options i think every class has a better option than this card so in two two stats cannot justify this effect also take five damage so it's a very very bad card will not see playing any deck next one is the Berkeley bully bully whenever your opponent casts a spell add a coin to your hand so four mana uh, five mana four six so pretty resilient stats it's pretty much what you get for five mana right now uh, but it's below average because it has like no divine shield or taunt whatever and you get a lot of coins um, so coins are like additional mana and but the opponent has to cast spells so the way how you hard counter this card is just by playing a minion and then killing it right then you don't get coins i think it's too situational too easy to play around it um it would be good for spell heavy decks i mean this is like a baby lower tap if Merc rogue would like dominate which i don't see right now then this card might be nice right because the, he has to use spells to take it out and you get a bunch of coins so it's a cool tech card i uh, will not see play right now but if the, it's a meta dependent card next up is sergeant sally definitely deal damage equal to this minions attack to all enemy minions pretty cool combo card you can combine it with power overwhelming and then it 
deals five damage to uh, to all enemy minions, to not not to your minions. So it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, you can just do it with abusive surgeon as well, and then it. Yeah, but then you have to sacrifice it in, and I think the main combo is really with PO, and then it kind of depends if this is like um, yeah worth to run this just to combo it with PO. I don't really see it with anything else, right? Because it if you as soon as you play it, it will just get killed by the opponent. Um, yeah. I don't see it being played in any other deck. To be honest, it, I only see the combo with PO right now. Next up is Worgen Greaser, 4 mana 6 free, just to weak health, it dies to everything. Just a neutral minion that is a filler card. Next up is Small Time Buccaneer, has plus 2 attack while you have a weapon equipped. Um, 1 mana, so the, on turn 1 it will always just have 1 2 stats, which are super bad but you can make it a free two for one mana if you have a ends of first mate so in aggressive decks this card will definitely see his play i think you will always have cards like upgrade or ends of first mate, like some sort of weapon then this is like a one mana free two also pirate so you synergize with all the pirate decks uh, i think they're pushing the pirate warrior pretty nice with this expansion i like this card Next up is Fight Promoter, Battlecry if you control a minion with 6 or more health, draw 2 cards. Um, for 6 mana, 4 for just 2 weak starts, it will not see any play. Just Next one is Genzo the Shark, whenever this attacks both players draw until they have 3 cards. 4 mana, 5 for very aggressive stats, legendary and pretty good effect for aggressive decks. So I can see definitely this card being played in aggressive decks, so it has to be killed. If it doesn't get killed, you and you like in tempo decks, it's hard to you always have to take out every minion the opponent plays, and it's like another minion you have to take out, or you just get super punished. A control deck usually has already three or more cards in hand, and an aggressive deck runs out of cards, so the, the effect only benefits you. It's basically a 5 4 4 that only be benefits you, and it has to be killed. I think it's a pretty good effect. We'll pl see playing aggressive decks if they don't die out. Next one is Hired Gun, 3 mana, 4 free taunt, it's just a pretty bad card, um, it's just worse than, um, than a monkey from, from Warrior. You don't want to have low health on a taunt minion ever. For this card to see play it would need to have 5 health. So next up is 6 mana defies Cleaner. 5 7 stats, which is pretty bad. Better cry silence a minion with death rattle. <laughs> Basically, the only minions you want to silence are minions with death rattle. So that's kind of funny. Um, silence a minion with death rattle. So they are coming back with the silence mechanic. So they're a little bit scared that ends of decks, control decks will be too strong. And now you have some silence. Mm, 6 mana silence are though. It's on curve usually, like people, if they play Karen, if they play Sylvanas, then you can play this on 6. You contest those minions, like 5-7 is perfect to uh, play against. It's a very situational card, and yeah, it counters cards like Sylvanas or Karen. It's kind of cool that this exists. It's like we ne you played, for example, Sylvanas by default just because it's the best minion uh, for its mana cost, but... Now we have a direct counter, so very cool. So, meta dependent card. If everyone runs a Vargas and can, then we would run this card. So, next one is Refute, another legendary 6 mana, 4 5, pretty bad stats. So, overcosted by 2 mana. Taunt, Battle Cry, draw cards until you draw one that isn't a dragon. Damn. So if you don't run dragon, you would just fatigue yourself for the memes. But if you play a dragon deck, you can just draw an insane amount of cards. Like, I'm not sure what to think about this card, man. Um, it will draw you at least one card, but the stats are too weak. I don't see you. Will, I don't see this card being played just because of the stats. 
Uh, it's so weird card, man. And I don't think you have a problem with running out of cards with dragon decks. And you would play um, Nether Spite uh, um, Historian if you would run off out of dragon cards. And now you have the 5 mana dragon that draws your cards. I think you're fine in that department. I don't see this card being played also except in some uh, disguised toast meme, meme videos. May or Nogmofogger? Nogmofogger is like my favorite elixir from World of Warcraft, so looking forward to the effect. All targets are chosen randomly. 9 mana, 5, 4. All targets are chosen randomly. So whenever something here, whenever you cast a spell or um, whenever someone attacks or anything, everything gets random. So to take out this minion, you have to be lucky, right? But it's uh, just a meme card. It's not a good competitive card. The stats are also super bad, but it's a funny card. It's definitely the worst legendary so far. A little bit disappointed that this card is bad because, you know. Oh, next one is the last. Hawk Chopper, the Tanaris Hawk Chopper, Battle Cry if your opponent's hand is empty, gain charge. Four mana, so in curve the opponent's hand should never be empty except they had the God to draw. And then this would be a four mana for four with charge, which would be pretty good, but the condition, uh, condition is too heavy. So Cochrane Elite all the way. Just a very bad card, we'll not see any play. Next card is Weasel, Tunnela, Defratel, shuffle this mini into your opponent's and deck. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. So, in a fatigue deck this would be awful, but it's it's pretty good for memeing. So the opponent doesn't want to draw this, it's like you infiltrate the opponent's deck, he draws this, then he has just a 1-1 one, one <laughs> and he gets salty and looks at this dumb face. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool meme card. I don't see this being played just because of the stats, it's too weak. It is a beast, but a 1-1. One, one. Basically, you don't want to draw it yourself, so it doesn't really make too much sense to run this card. Toxic Siva Us is the next card. 3 mana, 4 free. Battle cry remove vulnerability from your opponent's weapon. It is weaker than Acidic Swamp Us because it doesn't just destroy a weapon, it just uh, uh, destroys a durability. But most of the time, the opponent's weapon will only have one durability when you play an Us. And so it is a power creep, so you can you have now the option to play a little bit greedier weapon destruction and not just Acidic Swamp Ooze or Harrison Jones. Uh, I really like that this card exists, we'll definitely see play if weapon classes are played. The next card is Hosen Healer, 4 mana 2-6, Battle Cry Restore a minion to full health. I don't see any use for this effect right now, uh, because we would not want to heal minions right now, so and 2 6 stats for mana are also pretty bad, so it's a card that will not see any play. The card is Daring Reporter. Whenever your opponent draws a card, gain plus 1 plus 1. For mana 3 3, so when the opponent draws a card, it will be a 4 mana 4 4, pretty bad. So for this to be decent, it, the opponent has to draw at least 2 cards, and he will usually kill it before he draws two cards so it's a pretty bad card we'll not see any play next card is naga corsair it's a four mana five four which is pretty good it's a pirate which is also pretty good battle cry give your weapon plus one attack um yeah, i can see this in a pirate warrior pirate rook it's pretty reasonable effect bust your weapons you go for smoking pretty good card we'll see play in those decks Next card is Gadgetson Socialite, however you pronounce this. Battle Cry Restore to Health, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. It is basically a Farseer for 2 mana. Might see play in Reno decks, actually. Uh, but the heal amount is a little bit low. Um, but I can definitely see people attacking this in any ways. Uh, it combos with Bron Bronze Beard and yeah, it. If you have room in Reno decks, then I can see this card being played. Next card is Streetwise Investigator. Battle Cry enemy minions lose stealth. <laughs> what I mean, effect. There's not too many stealth minions that are played right now. 4 6 stats for 5 mana are okay for a card to be played, but it's a super meta dependent card. If Miracle Rook with Auctioneers would be a thing, but even then, you just de stealth it and 
you rarely have the mana left to just kill it. You would just de-stealth it. So you spend your mana to de-stealth a minion, but you don't have the mana to kill it afterwards. So it basically does nothing. It's like skipping the turn. Uh, it's a very bad card. I don't think it will see any play even in the meta where everyone plays stealth minions. Next card is Street Trickster. Spell damage plus one. Um, it's a free mana zero seven, which is god awful, but it gives you spell power. So you can play this with Demon Wrath and deal free damage to everything but him. Something that you cannot kill. Maybe it's actually not so bad because um, it usually doesn't die, but it helps you synergize your Shadow Bolt, Hellfire, Demon Wrath, and all that shenanigans. Interesting. I, I don't see people playing it yet, but. It works also with the buff cards, you know, the, the demon buff cards. Interesting card, but I don't see uh, it being played. So in the last card, finally, is red mana worm. 5 mana, 2, 6, which is pretty bad. Whenever you cast a spell again, plus 2 attack, pretty bad effect. Too situational, overcosted, and all that stuff, and not see any play. And that concludes all the cards from Mean Streets of Gadgets and... And that also concludes my video. I don't know how long this is gonna be, but it's pr I'm pretty sure it's a pretty long video. And thank you so much for being patient and watching the whole thing. If you did, I it's it's crazy that you went through all of it and listened to yeah, you, know, you cared to listen about what I think about the new cards. It's obviously as always super hard to say uh, specifically how good every card is because we haven't played those decks. And also how they interact with existing decks. Uh, if you want to see how I'm going through the struggle to figure that out, how everything works together, um, you can check out on my uh, my stream. Uh, yeah, as a, as always, I uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate you being here with me today, and make sure to give me a like if you enjoyed this video, and see you guys in the next video.